While building your team, there are a few things you'll want to do to protect your company. We'll talk about a few of those in today's video. Hi, I'm Steve Morris, and I use this Startup SOS channel to provide practical how-to advice for new entrepreneurs who are building a growth company and plan to use investor funding. As you grow your team, you're bringing on new people, and that's always a risk. You don't know for sure which people are going to work out, which won't, and in general, what's going to happen. So there are a few things that you should be looking to protect as you move ahead. One of them is your intellectual property, because you want to make sure that all of the intellectual property that's developed for the company actually belongs to the company. Another thing is, of course, protecting your stock, uh, just in case, say, people leave early. And then there's team effectiveness. Sometimes a team member just doesn't work out. And there are things you'll need to do to make sure that you minimize the negative impact when that happens. Well, let's start with how to protect your intellectual property as you're bringing people on board. Uh, now, there are several key types of intellectual property that you'll want to be concerned with. I'm going to run down the list here and not really go into explaining them. We'll talk more about intellectual property in a series of videos later on. But just briefly, the kind of things you will want to protect are, first of all, sometimes there are patentable ideas. You want to make sure that the company actually owns those, not the individual. Likewise, copyrights, whatever thing that somebody has uh, developed for the company, you want to make sure, again, the company owns that. There are, of course, trademarks uh, that you'll want to uh, make sure are done right to protect your branding image uh, for the company. And finally, there are trade secrets that you'll want to be doing the right things to protect. So what do you do to protect all those types of intellectual property? Well, there are a couple of agreements that you'll want to be sure that all of the co-founders sign, as well as any contractors or employees, consultants, anybody who's developing something for the company. Uh, those agreements are an intellectual property assignment agreement and a non-disclosure agreement. Now, the intellectual property assignment agreement, that ensures that any ideas that they develop relating to the company's business that could be patentable, well, those patent rights belong to the company. Uh, anything they develop that can be copyrighted, that copyright belongs to the company. Likewise, anything that gets developed that ends up being trademarked will belong to the company. And then the non-disclosure agreement really uh, relates directly to the trade secrets to make sure that uh, everybody's legally required to keep secret that which should be kept secret because that's the essence of trade secrets is they are know-how that you simply are keeping secret uh, because they give you a competitive advantage. Those are two very important documents to get signed very early on, hopefully before a person develops anything uh, for the company. So whatever they do develop relating to the company's business clearly is uh, owned by the company. And this is not something that you want to put off. You want to do it up front uh, when uh, there's very little at stake, everybody's friends, and later who knows what can happen if these documents don't get signed, especially the intellectual property assignment document, so that the company doesn't own what's been developed, that can become a point of negotiation later. It certainly becomes an issue when you try to go for investment. Any investor is going to want to be confident that your company owns its intellectual property. Stock, of course, is the other thing that needs to be protected. In our video on founder shares, we talked about how it's important to have that vest and how vesting typically is done uh, in the form of a declining buyback right, although there are certainly other ways to do it that your lawyer can tell you about. But being sure to protect your stock so that you can recover a goodly part of it should somebody leave the company early, that's important because your stock is valuable and you don't want somebody walking away with more than they should. So when founders buy their shares, that purchase needs to be documented in a share purchase agreement that's been put together by an emerging business attorney who really knows what they're doing uh, in terms of protecting your stock. So that's a very important base to cover with your co-founders. Now that's also something you need to cover with any stock options you issue, but that's something that typically is already baked into a stock option plan is some kind of a vesting schedule. The other critical thing you need to protect is your team effectiveness. Unfortunately, you're not always sure when you bring on a new team member whether or not they're going to work out. Maybe they just don't fit the role. And as a startup, 
you really can't afford somebody on the team that can't do the role that they're supposed to do. So in a case like that, you probably have to exit the person from the company and bring in somebody else who can do that role. Well, that means you get the unpleasant task of dealing with that situation, of, of basically firing somebody. And that's never a pleasant thing to do. It almost always gets put off longer than it should be. Uh, and that's always a, a mistake. So it's important to bite the bullet when it's clear that somebody isn't working out. It's important to go ahead and fix that sooner instead of later, because the longer you have somebody in a role who's not performing, the more it's going to delay getting done what needs to be done. Now, that's one scenario that can happen. Somebody just can't perform their role. You can get another scenario where somebody perhaps is totally competent, can perform the role, but they end up just being a toxic uh, element in the team. They cause trouble. Uh, they're just not a good team player. Well, that's an equally big problem. And if that happens, well, again, it's frustrating because they're competent in their role, but they're just causing problems on the team. Again, important to fix that, and the fix probably is to exit them from the company and bring in somebody else. So that's never something that's pleasant to do, but it's an important thing to do early in a company's history. Unlike a bigger company with more people, you just can't afford to have any people that aren't pulling their weight, not in a startup. Of course, that applies even a little further down the road when you start bringing on your early employees. You're still small. You still can't afford to have people on board who, who really aren't able to do their job, and you certainly can't ever afford to have people on board that are simply toxic to the team that, that are just causing problems. So it's difficult, but it's important to fix people problems sooner rather than procrastinating and putting it off until later. So those are three key areas worth paying attention to to protect your company. The intellectual property ownership, the stock uh, in the company, and the team effectiveness. Now, those all seem pretty basic, but it's amazing how often any three of those can end up causing problems, problems that aren't dealt with as quickly as they should be, or problems that weren't avoided by setting things up right the first time. So pay attention to all three and your startup life will be a bit less dramatic. If that was helpful, please click the like button, share it with others, uh, leave a note in the comments, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that and click the notification bell because there's more coming up in this series. And of course, we're collecting it all in a playlist and the link to that is right here. And that's a wrap for this time. Thank you very much for watching.